for the longest time, Procreate wasn't able to read PDF files. And this is especially annoying for doing architecture work because most of the time our drawings are in PDF and not in JPEGs. But in the latest version of Procreate 5.2, they finally wrote out a feature that you can actually import your PDF files into the program, do your markup and red lines, which are all fantastic features but there are some limitations that you should be aware of. So in this video, we're gonna look at how this feature works and how we can adopt this into our design workflow from reading a PDF into working with scale. Now, the only way to bring in a PDF is actually from this gallery view. So hit that import button and I already have a PDF in my iCloud. So I'm just gonna open this document up. Now at the bottom of this menu bar, you actually see a new toggle called page assist. And this essentially is a slider that allows you to slide from one page into the next. And this is how you navigate a PDF file. And in this layer palette, you actually see that each layer is a page in this PDF. So if you turn on a layer, that page goes away. And in this page assess menu bar, you, what you can do is you can also add a page by clicking on the new page. And this is gonna add a page in the middle as a blank page. And this is also gonna be reflected in the layers palette. And if you wanna delete a page, you can just hit on that page and hit delete or do the same thing with duplicate. If your goal is to simply read the PDF and turn the pages, then this page assist is really helpful. And instead of turning on the individual layers on and off to review the content of that particular page, you can just really just slide to the page that you want and pick a brush that you want to do any red lines with directly on that page. So what's really nice about this is that, you know, when you do the markup, you can still pick any of the brushes from Procreate and make the drawings from there. And this is kind of a, you know, pretend markup. And if you're done, you can also just share this as a PDF file and that will be under share and share the PDF files with all the layers included under this menu here. So if you're simply looking for a tool to open up the PDF and do some simple markup, I think this is adequate. I'm not saying this is the greatest tool out there. However, I have noticed one downside when you bring in the PDF into Procreate and that is Procreate automatically have downsized the original size of the PDF into something that they will be able to fit in a relatively reasonable size. So you see that PDF is actually a almost a 10 inch by six inch paper with a 264 DPI, which isn't as close to the size that it should be. So what this means is, you know, when you zoom in on the PDF, everything is going to look a little pixelated because it's no longer a vector based format. This is actually individual pixels transported into lines. Now this isn't blurry by any means. It just means you have to deal with a lower resolution when you do your markup and viewing the PDF. And when you ultimately export this as a PDF, you're gonna have to live with the same level of resolution and not in a vector-based format. It still reads the information just fine, it's just not as crisp. And so far, I haven't seen any settings that allows you to import this thing with a much higher resolution. So this page assist is also just new to this new version of Procreate and it's actually a toggle under canvas that you can turn on and off. And when it's off, this is gonna look really weird. So that's because all the layers are all turned on and you have a hodgepodge of drawings. So it makes sense to have this toggle on and then just to slide through the pages as you want. I think a better use scenario of this feature is actually to pair this with the Procreate scale templates that I've created, which are printable both in metric and imperial units. And if you're interested to see how that works, you should check out the video link up here, which should pop up. For example, here, I'm actually going to copy this layer and then bring it into my template. So hit copy under add and then let's exit out of this and into our template section of the templates. I am gonna pick the same 24 by 36 inch paper size to match what we had in the other drawing. This is a template that's actually to scale. So this is gonna be printable to a PDF and then you can print it out and measure it out with actual or physical scale. And this is gonna be that 24 by 36 inch size paper at a quarter inch to a foot in scale. 
So now I'm just gonna paste out the drawing that I copy from, from the other drawing. And this is gonna come in a lot smaller and this is not to scale, which makes sense because the other drawing wasn't to scale. And the whole idea here is to transform this layer into the right scale so that we can draw and print it out. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually, without zooming in right now, I'm going to find a distance that we can scale this up to. So I know from this wall to this wall is 20 uh, feet and six inches. So on my scale layer, uh, which I have the quarter inch to a foot scale turned on, I am going to create a new layer and I am going to count 20, about 20 squares and six inches of the squares because each square on this template is one foot of uh, unit. So let's start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twenty and a half. So from this dot to this dot, I know that's gonna be twenty and six. So let's go back to my drawings now and I am going to scale up this drawing using the transform tool. And I am just gonna try the best as I can to match that internal length. So right about here is what I think is gonna be 20 feet and six inches and a half. I mean, the half doesn't really make a difference at this scale. So I am gonna be okay to do this transform. And now, if you look at the drawing again, this drawing uh, is properly sized at quarter inch scale. So if I just try it out with another measurement, for example, so I have five foot five here. So each, remember each square is one foot in length. So this should be five and a half uh, squares approximately. So let's just count one, two, three, four, five. And then that looks like half a square. So I know this is actually plotted to scale. And if I use the sketch to sketch on top and I can save it as a PDF and print it out in my printer, I know this is gonna be printed with this paper size at this certain scale. And this can be applied to any other scale on here. So for example, if I didn't wanna be drawing on quarter inch, I could be drawing on half, a half inch to a quarter or a three eighth or one eighth or one sixteenth. So these are all the template sizes that I've made available for you to download. And you can find the link in the description below. And my templates are made for a variety of paper scales that you should be able to bring in to Procreate and use that right away. So this workaround template that I've designed is actually very durable. And I've been using this for the last couple of years as a designer and it totally works. And I also just wanna take this time to address some of the questions that I've been getting lately. Some have asked me why I chose to work on Procreate instead of using apps like Concept or Mofolio Trace. And those apps tend to have a better sort of a calibration to measure distance or grids. And the short answer is I really love Procreate because Procreate has better tools for artistic expressions, I think. I have my custom brush, color, templates, blending modes. It really kind of feels like a Photoshop to me and I'm able to make prettier drawings in perspective, plants, and 3D because of this. Lastly, I think Procreate is such a big player in this digital drawing industry. I just don't think they're gonna go away anytime soon. So I'm investing in the app now because I know they're gonna stick around and they have really rolled out so many other cool features in this recent update, which includes having to import a 3D model in here and be able to draw in 3D. So I think it's just a matter of time before they came out with better tools for architects and interior designers one day. So I hope you got something out of this video. And if you really wanna know how I work in scale, make sure you check out this video right here. Okay, thanks for watching again.